AI is one of the hottest topics in the market at the moment and if you ever wanted to learn about AI then this free tutorial is for you. This is part of the advent of Cyber by TryHackMe which is a completely free competition for beginners to participate in fun and educational challenges. I will go through the basics of AI and machine learning but I will also explain to you how AI can be used in cybersecurity. and if you're new to the channel I'm Unix guy and I help people land their first cyber security job even if they don't have any degree or any technical IT background. I have many videos where I show you exactly how to land your first cyber security job like this video for example. But wait a minute it's almost Christmas time let's get into it so in day 14 of the challenge the CTO has made our toy pipeline go wrong that's not unusual of CTOs by the way by infecting elves at key positions in the toy making process he has poisoned the pipeline and caused the elves to make defective toys Maxkiddy has started to combat the problem by placing control elves in the pipeline these elves take measurements of the toys to try and narrow down the exact location of problematic elves in the pipeline by comparing the measurements of defective and perfect toys however this isn't incredibly tedious and lengthy process so he's looking to use machine learning so in this story the CTO has messed up the process of making toys and what we want to do is use the power of AI and machine learning to try and detect which toys are in good condition and which toys are defective but first things first we need to learn the difference between AI and machine learning you see so many people use the word AI by mistake because what they really are referring to is what we call machine learning machine learning is essentially a process where we try and teach a machine to make make human intelligence. For example, I want my machine to be able to make decisions accurately. But the problem we face is that sometimes we end up using if statements. For example, if we're producing toys and we want all the toys to be red, but one of the toys is blue, then our machine can detect if the toy is blue. Because that's an easy process. We can just have an if statement that says if the toy is not red, then the toy is defective. But unfortunately, in the real world, the problems that we face are a little bit more complicated. For example, in our toys problem here, it's not just the color but sometimes it's the height sometimes it's the weight or the dimension so to effectively solve this problem we need to use proper machine learning the process of analyzing the input and trying to find the problem this process and this flow of decision we call it an algorithm now there are so many different algorithms for machine learning which go beyond this video but here we will explore three types of machine learning algorithms so the first one is called genetic algorithm this structure essentially mimics the process of natural selection and evolution it's essentially essentially an algorithm based on the theory of survival for the fittest. Fairly simplistic idea, but it can be complicated when we try to implement it in real life. The second type is called particle swarm. So this one aims to mimic the process of how birds flock in a group together at a specific point. And the third one is called the neural network. The neural network is by far the most popular one. In fact, this is the one that I learned long time ago in university. And if I'm honest with you, I forgot most of the stuff that I learned because I didn't practice or apply it in the real world. But Today with the AI boom, I find myself needing to go back to those concepts and learn them again, which is a lot of fun for me. So basically neural networks mimic the process of how neurons work in our brain. Neural networks try to replicate our human brain. So we have so many cells and neurons in our brain and they receive various inputs and they produce outputs. So this is the basic idea behind neural networks. And this is the one that we will use in our example today. And I promise you, as we go through the example, it will become a lot easier to learn and understand. So the neural neural network, much like the human brain, needs to learn before it can make decisions. And there are many ways to teach neural networks how to make decisions. In fact, so many PhD programs are based on specific way of teaching neural networks and trying to find the efficiency of that way. In this example here, we will be learning two methods of training neural networks. The first one is called supervised learning and the second one is called unsupervised learning. The supervised learning is where we provide the neural network with the information that we want it to learn. So ideally, we need to create what we refer to as data sets. These data sets are essentially information that we feed to the neural network in order for the neural network to be able to make decisions based on this data. For example, if I want to teach the neural network about toys, my data set should include information about what a good toy looks like so that when the neural network sees a toy that doesn't look like the good toy, then it can tell you whether it's defective or not. The second type is called unsupervised learning and this one is a little bit more complex. We basically let the neural network try and find interesting things. 
So in our toys example, instead of specifically telling the neural network that this is a good toy, what we do instead is we feed a large amount of information about toys in general. And then we let the neural network try to make correlations and decisions based on that data. As I said, this is a complex topic. And in the challenge, there are links that you can follow where you can read more about this later on. In this example that we will go through, we will use the supervised learning method. So as you can see in this example, our machine learning model here consists of three layers. We have the input layer, and then we have a hidden layer, and we have then the output layer. So at the moment, we have a neural network that doesn't have any information. So the first step is to give it some information. That information is fed to the neural network at the input layer. So in this example, you can see that the input layer have the height, width, length, color scheme, make ID, and the check ID. And at the end of that model, we have something called the output layer. This will simply tell us whether the toy is defective or not. But then in the middle, we have the hidden layer. This is where the magic happens. This is where the math, where the computation happens. This is where the neural network tries to make sense of the data. And the hidden layer itself can be composed of so many layers. In fact, the more complicated the calculations are, the more layers we need. Now, this example doesn't go deep into what a node is, but if I was to simplify it for you, a node can be a server, it can be a laptop, it even can be an application instance or a thread. Think of a node as like something that does computations. So the more computational nodes we have, the more servers we have, the more computing power we have, the more mathematical computation we can perform. So if we have a complex neural network that's doing true artificial intelligence, we really need a lot of computational power and a lot of mathematical calculations as well. Now in this example, we will zoom in a little bit on the hidden layer to see how the calculations are performed. But don't worry, it's not complex math. It's very, very basic, simplified for you just to know enough to understand how neural networks actually work. We don't just take the inputs as they are. In fact, we multiply the inputs by the weight. Now, this is important logic. We need to understand the relationship between the height and the weight of the toy. This will help the neural network understand which input contribute more to the output than others. So for example, one toy could be a lot taller than other toys, but once we factor in the weight, then we can see how much that height is actually contributing. Similarly, we don't just take the output value as it is, but we take that output value and we put it into what we refer to as an activation function. The purpose of the activation function is that we don't want the outputs to be just random numbers. We want these outputs to be within one range so we can compare the toys to one another. So in this example, we want the output to be a decimal number between zero and one, or it could be between minus one and one. Now that we have some idea of how the neural network operates, the next step would be to train the neural network. This means we need information to feed into the neural network so it can start and make decisions for us. So the first method here is called the feed forward loop. This is the simplest form of training. So essentially the way it works, the first step is we normalize the input. Normalize the input is what we talked about in the previous step, which is we multiply it by weight to help the neural network decide which inputs are more important. And then we feed the inputs to our nodes in the input layer, as you can see in the diagram. And then we simply get the answer. So the more data we give to the neural network, the better the decision will be because it will know what a defective toy looks like. But that's only half of the equation. We have been feeding input to the neural network now we need to do what we refer to as back propagation. This is where we simply tell the neural network whether the answer was correct or not. And that's how the neural network can learn. So we will give the neural network a certain input and then the neural network will come and tell you, well, I think this toy is good, but then you will look at it and say, yes, it was. And then you will look at the answer and then you will tell the neural network whether the answer was correct or not. And that's how the neural network can be trained to make better decisions. Now, the last topic that we need to talk about before we go into solving the challenge is the information that we feed to the neural network, which we refer to as data sets. Now, the type of data that we give to the neural network is a huge topic on its own, and it's not straightforward. So as Try Hack Me is trying to explain it, if you were at school and your teacher have explained to you that one plus one equal two and two plus two equal four, but then in the exam, you get the question of three plus three. Now we know that the answer is six, but you can only know that if you understood the basic principle of addition. If you just memorized one plus one equal two and two plus two equal four, then you won't be able to calculate three plus three. You have to understand the logic behind the calculation. The same thing applies to machine learning. We can simply give our neural network so much information, but then the neural network end up memorizing all of this information. The problem is when the neural network faces a new problem that it hasn't seen before, then it can't make a decision. So the way we train our neural network is we need to train it in such a way that it understands the underlying logic. It's not just cramming and memorizing 
optimizing things. So the way we fix this problem is that we need to know how much information is enough. Otherwise, we will end up into what we refer to as overtraining. This is when we give the neural network way too much information that it ends up memorizing the answers as opposed to understanding the logic. So to achieve that, we do something we refer to as validation. We essentially validate whether the neural network has learned enough or not. So to perform validation, we have to split the data set into three data sets. The first set is called the training data. This is the information that we feed to the neural network. But then we also need validation data, which is what we will use to validate whether the neural network understood our training or not. So after each training round, we need to send the validation data through our network to determine the performance. If the performance starts to decline, then we know that we're overtraining our neural network. And finally, we have testing data. This data set is simply used to calculate the final performance of the network. The network shouldn't see this data until we're completely done with the training process. So with all of this background information, now we can proceed to solve our challenge. And I promise you, the hard part is done. This challenge is straightforward and I'll show you exactly how to solve it. So we essentially have three files. One is a Python script called Detector. And then we have our training data set and we have our testing data set. We need training data set, we need validation data set, and we need testing data set. In this particular example, the training and the validation data sets are both in the same file. So we only have two files for simplicity. Now, what we need to do is we need to add some lines of codes to our Python script. But don't be afraid, you don't actually need to know Python programming or anything because these lines of codes are given to you. All you need to do is you need to start the machine in the top right corner and this will split our screen in half and then we can copy the lines of codes into the detector script. So as you can see, if we walk through the codes, the first thing we do is we import Python libraries that are needed for our neural network. Here we're using two libraries. One is called pandas and the other one is called scikit-learn for building our neural network. And the next thing is we need to load the data set. In our case, we have two Excel files. And then once we get the input data, remember we normalize it. So in our previous example, we had to multiply it by the weight. But also in this example, we need to make all the inputs numerical. So even the color, we need to just convert it to numbers so that we get a simple decimal output answer. And finally, we need to load the data. Everything will be stored in the variable we call x and test underscore x stores the testing data for us. The next step is where you will need to copy some lines of code. So for our data set, remember we have one file for both the training and the validation. So we will split the data. In this example, we will use an 80-20 split. So what I will do, I will simply copy this line into the script shown. I use the VIM editor because as I was recording, it was a little bit slow. Remember, you can just use the graphical interface. You can simply double click on the script and you can copy and paste the line. You don't actually need to use the VIM editor if that's easier for you. And the next step, we need to copy these lines to normalize the data. Simply copy paste this line into the script and then we need to start the training process. Again, all I will do is just copy this line into the script. Then we've got our classifier code and our validation prediction code as well. And finally, we need to insert the testing prediction code as well. Once you're done, remember Remember to save the file. If you've double clicked on the file and you edited that, just make sure to click save and then we will simply run this Python script. So we simply type the command python3 space and then we type detector.py. You can copy this line of code if it's easy for you. And then we can watch the magic happen. A few moments later. Now when you finish, the prediction will be saved to a file. Then we simply need to upload the prediction to this URL. So open this URL within your testing machine and then we upload the file. So let's see if our prediction were accurate. If our accuracy is above 90%, then we will be awarded with the flag. And here we go, winning. We got the flag. I'm not gonna lie, it feels good. Now when you run it, you may not always get 90% accuracy. And if that happens, simply run it again. And the explanation for that is within neural networks, there is some random built in. Remember, they try to mimic a real human brain, a real neural network. So this is a known issue to look out for. Now when it comes to cybersecurity, AI and machine learning are not a new topic. In fact, even five years ago, I was bombarded by vendors telling me how they have this sophisticated AI and machine learning built into their products. But when I go and test them, I get extremely questionable results. It was simply bad. However, today they have gotten a lot better. Now some of the security tools that can make use of 
AI is tools we use to detect unusual behavior. And this is important because neural network can be really good at detecting things a lot faster than us humans. For example, if you have a malware on your network, then the traffic will look different than the normal traffic. So your neural network can actually learn what a normal day-to-day -day operation looks like. And whenever there is something unusual, then that AI or machine learning can generate an alert for you. This is extremely useful for cybersecurity professionals who work in detecting and responding to cyber attacks. Another thing which is also popular in the industry is what we refer to as user behavior analytics. For example, if every day I log into my email at 9 a.m. from Australia, but all of a sudden out of the blue, my username logs into my email at 3 a.m. from France. This is an unusual behavior because machine learning have learned and observed my behavior over a very long period of time and now it can detect if I'm doing something that's unusual. Now notice these are simplistic examples, but as you've learned in this course, if you provide really good data sets into your machine learning, it can provide you with fairly accurate predictions. Now the final part of the challenge is to answer the questions. So the first question is what is the other term given for artificial intelligence? This is an easy one, machine learning. The second question is what machine learnings aim to mimic the process of natural selection? It's called genetic algorithm. We talked about this at the beginning of the lesson. And then what's the name of the learning style that makes use of labeled data to train a machine learning structure? If we scroll up, this is called supervised learning. And what's the name of the layer between the input and output layers of neural network? This is the hidden layer. This is where the magic happens. And finally, what is the name of the process used to provide feedback to the neural network on how close its prediction was? This is called back propagation. This is where we tell the network whether the prediction was correct or not. And finally, we need to submit the flag that we got. So all we need to do is copy paste the flag here and submit. Now, as I said, AI and machine learning are an extremely hot topic in cybersecurity. And if you're trying to land your first cybersecurity job, then I have a step-by-step -step roadmap to take you from absolute beginner all the way to becoming a cybersecurity professional in this video. And I'll see you there.